England ended their semi-final major tournament voodoo by beating Sweden 4-0 to reach the final of the European Championship at Wembley on Sunday. They'll face either France or Germany who play each other tonight. Let's get some reaction to an incredible night at Bramall Lane. And we'll speak live to the Manchester City defender Esme Morgan. Um, Esme, very good afternoon to you. I mean, this was almost as perfect as you can get from England. How much did you enjoy it last night? A heck of a lot. They were brilliant. Um, I think the whole second half was just such an amazing, amazing atmosphere. Um, 30,000 people in the crowd just having an absolute ball, uh, watching the girls just play their hearts out, and then another 9 million at home just being inspired by them just completely taking the game to Sweden and playing with such freedom and confidence and just being in complete control uh, throughout the second half. It was just amazing. And then to see them all celebrating as they did after the game, it just feels so close to being something unforgettable. Yeah, I mean, unforgettable is the word, isn't it? I mean, remember that we've had already a, a 5 nil and an 8 nil bef before then and the comeback against Spain. You know, it, there's been some amazing performances just all the way through this tournament. As you say, they grew as the game went on. Normally, England like to put us through the ringer, both the men and the women, by the way. Um, but, but last night was a little different, wasn't it? But aside maybe the, the little opening spell where Sweden obviously went hard from, from the first whistle. What, what do you think is different about this England side? Yeah, as you said, there were a few heart and mouth moments sort of early on when they got in behind a couple of times. But from then on, they just looked so in control. And I think there's an aura about the team now where England don't believe they'll ever be beaten. And I think even now the opposition, as soon as England get that first goal, they almost look defeated. They look around at each other. And I think they think with the support England have behind them and the momentum that England build throughout the games, I think even the opposition maybe have the mindset that, God, we've got an absolute mountain to climb here as soon as they go behind because they know how much belief this England squad have. It just oozes out of them and I think that's really powerful um, to sort of have that hold over your opponents. We've got to talk about that Alessia Russo goal, Esme. I mean, <laughs> just, I don't know if you can try and put yourself in her shoes or in, or in her, you know, in her mind about, you know, what happens when you, you strike a shot, the, the keeper saves it, then you have a second, you know, a second chance. And if you're back healing and it goes wrong, everyone's going, oh, come on, you could have recycled the ball. But, you know, it, it was, again, just, just perfect, wasn't it? Have you seen anything like it before? No, a moment of absolute genius. And you say, can you put them, yourself in her shoes? I cannot, because I would never try such a thing. Um, the shot that she had beforehand, you'd probably expect her to score it 10 times out of 10. But then to have that ingenuity as you're going away from goal to just come up with that moment of magic, incredible, incredible. And I wonder how many girls on the playground and boys at school today are practising that because there are a few of us in training doing back heels and shouting Russo as we did it. So I can only imagine how many people she'll have inspired with that one. I mean, listen, obviously the focus, especially with the number of goals that, that have been scored in this tournament by England, there's going to be a lot of focus on those attacking players, Beth Mead, you know, and, and, and the likes of Alessia Russo off the bench. But, but let's just have a word about the defenders. I mean, Millie Bright has been a wall. Leah Williamson playing with her in defence, with that calmness, with that composure. Can, can you maybe, you know, show us exactly how good they have been and how they've just helped set the tone for England? Yeah, I think Millie Bright's been the unsung hero of this journey throughout the tournament, to be honest. That first game at Old Trafford, she was colossus. She was in front of everything, making so many clearances. And the two of them last night were such a barricade in front of Mary Earps, who, to be fair to herself, made a great save on quite a number of occasions when it did get past them. E Esme, I'm really, so really sorry. I'm going to have to clearances. interrupt you for just a moment. Just, just a moment. We'll come straight back to you. It's just because the England coach as you can see here, uh, is, 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 is moving. We just get, get some shots of this uh, because, of course, you know, we're keeping our, a very close eye on, on the squad. Um, you know, we saw them leaving the, the team hotel a little bit earlier on um, and, you know, that they're getting onto the coach and particularly liked a moment where Ellen White was pretending to be the bouncer for Alessia Russo, knowing the uh, attention she's getting and kind of jokingly, you know, fending off any paparazzi who might want to, you know, snap a, a quick photo of her. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, you know, th this is something where, you know, we, we are just... Uh, it shows 
shows the level of coverage really for the England women's team um, and, and, and that this is now you know getting towards on par with what you would expect for the men's team uh, as well. Let's just quickly join Anton Tolui who is with the England team. Uh, over to you Anton because you know you've been with them all every step of the way and here they are again. Yeah, um, I was uh, something quite satisfying about cutting Esme Morgan off in her prime, considering how much grief she's been giving me over the last few weeks. On coming back, back to their west, southwest London base after, well, winning the Battle of Bramall Lane, after slaying the Swedes' hopes, and now becoming the first finalist of Euro 2022. There's Serena Wiegmann. All the players to a person last night, pretty much telling us that she is the person that is responsible for bringing a new dynamic, a new ethic, a new hope to this England squad. Remember this England team, three consecutive semi-finals in Euros and World Cups. Last night they did something they haven't done since 2009. You see all the backroom staff coming off now. And Fran Kirby leads the players off. Her best game of the tournament last night after what she's been through, illness, and took such a while to get back. I haven't played 90 minutes since February before this tournament. Mary Earps was magnificent, wasn't she, last night? Some crucial saves. Chloe Kelly, who, who we heard from earlier, and her Manchester City teammate Lauren Hemp. Hannah Hampton recovered from COVID to be on the bench last night. There's Alessia Russo. We're all talking about that goal, aren't we? That cheeky, impudent, finish, the way she managed to nutmeg he uh, Hedvig Lindahl, one of the most experienced goalkeepers in Europe. Massive talking point. Lucy Bronze looking a little bit stiff, not going to lie, she's got her comfort pillow there. And there's the captain, uh, Leah Williamson as well. A huge cheer from the, uh, from the team here at the Lensbury Hotel. We all come out to welcome England. Jill Scott, she's been there, done it before, hasn't she? She's looking forward to this final. And Beth Mead, the golden boot well, is the holder not quite there at the moment, but she will be. Millie Bright's been a colossus and she at the back as well. So England, they will have, well, the players that didn't play last night, they've got no time to rest. They're going to get back on that training pitch a little bit later. For the players that did play, it's the dreaded recovery day. Yes, they might get a nice massage, but, you know, they'll also have to go into a cryo chamber, into, into an ice bath, into basically that horrible part of recovery, but they need to be match up. The team will all do their own little thing for the next couple of hours after that, and then they will all assemble tonight for dinner, and of course they will watch that huge game tonight. Will it be Germany? Will it be France? Who will England play in the final of the Euros at Wembley? The team will be watching. We'll all be watching. Oh, let's find out who. Thank you very much indeed, Anton. Uh, let's, let's get back to Esme Morgan. Um, Esme, I mean, you know, we've got some amazing like, aerial shots of the, of the team bus as it arrives at the West London Team Hotel. Um, you know, seeing the players being given that, almost like that, you know, that, that welcome again. You know, there's people around the, the squad who are watching and following their, their every move. What, what do you sense is the bond in this squad? When you, when you think about, you know, how they've come together and, and why is it that this bond has been so forged so tightly and it's working so well? I think it's shared experiences. They've obviously gone through the transition of having a new manager and there's been different developments and new ways of working and I think they've realised the things that have cost them in the past and cost England men's teams in the past and it's been those inter-club rivalries and they've lost that now. They've got a shared goal. They know they're capable of winning this tournament and I think that's carrying them through. The people on the bench trust the starters that they're going to do their job and the starters trust those who are coming on that they're going to change the game if needed and put in the performance and I think it's just that belief and confidence in each other that unites you and really carries you towards that shared goal of bringing this tournament home or keeping it at home because it's already here. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, is it coming home? I think I know the answer to that one. Um, but, but let's quickly speak about, about <laughs> Serena Wiegmann as a kind of a final talking point with USA because, you know, she's got this, this incredible composure. Um, she's the sort of person who, who, you know, if anything, wants to deflect attention uh, away from herself, away from the girls, keep everything very cool, very calm. Um, just a word on, on, on what impact she's had, how much of a factor she has been in all of this. I think she's been huge because it was a really, really unstable time for the England team before she came in. They'd had a period of having Phil Neville and then an interim manager in the meantime and it was just a strange transitional phase but she's really stabilised them and 
given them all a belief and confidence that they can be one of the best teams in the world. And I think, as you said, she's so calm and composed and just deflects any difficult questions that come her way. And I think that completely takes the pressure off the team and just allows them to enjoy the journey that they're on and, and go ahead and play with freedom. And I think it's really, really special that she's done that and you see the bond that she has with them. They love playing for her. She loves working with them. And I think that sort of unity is, is what taken, has taken them this far. Of course, we know that it is an unbeaten record as England manager. Um, a, a winning streak in European Championship football with 11 games, 11 wins. Because of course, she was the Netherlands coach when they won it last time out. So think about that. It's coming home, isn't it? Surely, Esme? I refuse to sing the song because I don't want to jinx them, but I believe they can do it without a doubt. Do you know what? Well, you're going to be singing the loudest come Sunday if they indeed do do it. Um, Esme, <laughs> what, what a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much. Um, and enjoy the semi-final tonight and, and enjoy the game on Sunday as well. Thank you.